Yeah, yeah so um, good afternoon to our honoured guests here and um, Jim and to unfortunately the parents that couldn't be here today due to COVID. Um, but yeah, no, I'm just going to take you through our tech project this year and um, yeah, I, I picked um, tech as my speciality this year with um, these five guys and honestly, I think for me it was the best decision that I made. Like I could have done farming, but it's unlikely that I'm going to own a farm. I could have done business, but we actually did business with the chicken coop. Um, and I could have done physical, but I enjoy that kind of thing. So I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I'll do it in my own time. Um, but yeah, I got to know these five guys very well, really, really um, hard grafters. Uh, and basically, uh, Mr. Maslow challenged us um, with making this a portable uh, chicken coop. And the, the purpose of this thing is firstly to provide eggs for Quest because we go through about 120 to 180 eggs a day. Um, and this chicken coop at the moment can house 300 chickens. Um, and if they're layers, that's going to produce between 250 to 300 eggs um, per day. So um, the reason, like if you look in here, it's all chicken mesh. So, and the reason we've done that is so that all the chicken droppings go right through the chicken mesh and it goes straight onto the, um, the, the pasture. So this chicken coop will be taken out into the fields anywhere through the kebab and it will be left at any given location for like a couple of days or we'll have a fenced off patch. Um, and the chickens will obviously, their droppings, either it'll be scooped up and used as manure in the um, vegetable garden or just left in the, in the past just to fertilize um, the ground. So that was uh, Mr. Musto's main objective of it. But then also the byproduct is obviously having eggs and the surplus of eggs that we're going to have. Hopefully we can sell it back um, to local um, shops in Alexandria and make, make some profit off it. Um, so yeah, that was the idea behind the chicken coop. But this thing started from scratch. We, the only things that were pretty much pre-made was the middle itself, the axle, the tires. Um, but everything you see here was done by these, these five guys. And um, really these guys have, have worked hard. We, we basically built the, the flatbed first, put the axle on, um, did everything, all the welding, um, putting on the, uh, the coupler at the front. Um, and then we basically started building the substructure. But um, from the beginning, we, we decided on a design. We, we were thinking of an A-frame, wooden roof with trusses, um, corrugated roofing, like complicated gutter systems for eggs. And basically we went to Mr. Master, showed him this whole um, spreadsheet that we'd put out and he just, he showed us the door and said, go back to the drawing board, this is not gonna work. And like, we all came out of there quite disheartened. We were like, so you haven't even had a, a proper look at this thing? And he said, no, go away. Um, and I, <laughs> so you're, I'm actually diluting the story. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, that, I think for us, that was a good life lesson. You're not, you're not going to get everything right first time. And you need someone to be firm and say, listen, guys, I'm not paying this money for this thing. I'm not sure it's going to work 100%. So we went back to the drawing board, looked up a guy in Cape Town who had a, a chicken coop similar to this, but it was covered in shade cloth. And I'm sure you've, you've probably heard stories. The weather we get here in the Kabar is, is dreadful. Like the, the wind is so strong and when it howls, it howls properly. So we were thinking shade cloth, but that was gonna be ripped to shreds in less than a couple of weeks. So, and then we heard, thanks to one of our tech boys here, Peter, which didn't speak up at the beginning, but three weeks into our, our specialization, we said, oh, my neighbor's a, a chicken farmer and he has these portable chicken coops. So he thought, Piki, why have you been quiet for so long? We all wanted to wind them around the chops. But anyway, so taught us a valuable lesson. And he said, there's no point in reinventing the wheel. Like if it's been invented, go to someone who knows what they're doing and get ideas from them. So to cut a long story short, we headed to a guy in Addo. Um, and he, he basically does this for a living. So he makes or he produces organic eggs. And he has something like 16 of these coops. Um, and he, he's got it waxed. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's been there, so he knows what doesn't work, what works, etc. So we, we very, um, well, he very kindly let us go there and have a look and ask questions. So we did just that. We went there, took measurements, um, asked him if we could use his, his idea, and he was more than happy with it. So myself, um, Seb, and Tate went, took all the measurements, and we really, like, we liked his design, so we pretty much tried to replicate what, what he had. 
Um, and to put it in perspective, he builds these things, gets all the stuff delivered from Joburg, um, all the, the chicken equipment, and he sells these things for 135,000 Rand. So we thought, sure, the so it's definitely not going to let us build that thing for a budget of 135 grand, but it actually didn't cost us that much. We, the A-frame that we originally designed was going to cost us 40k, um, and we knew this was going to cost us a little bit more, so we estimated at about 50, 50 grand, um, and we actually we actually went over that by um, 10,000. So this cost us 60,000 rand to make, um, but I, I'm pretty sure with um, being able to sell eggs back, um, Jim being able to use this for fertilization in the, um, in the field, it's going to be a, a good asset for the farm. Um, and so thank you for letting us um, honestly like build this thing. Like we learned, we really did learn a lot. Um, and yeah, so just to, to explain how this chicken coop works. So from here, this is where you harvest the eggs. So if you have a look in there, there's 48 coops. It's um, six coops high by eight wide. And we basically bolted every single thing together because rust driving this thing through the salt welds are inevitably going to snap. And when they snap, it's just a, it's a huge problem. So basically, this whole thing can be dismantled to not, no more than that high off the ground. Everything just comes apart. Um, so yeah, the chickens will, you can house 300 chickens in here, but we're only going to start off with 200. Um, and they will all go into their roosting um, boxes, which are laid with astroturf. And when they lay an egg, it's at a slight angle, and there's gutters at the back here, so the egg will roll. Um, and the people harvesting eggs will enter from this side so that they don't go into the chicken coop and cause the chicken stress, because the more stress you cause the chicken, the less it's gonna um, lay eggs. So we've yeah, created um, their own entrance. And then that small door you see over there, that's for people who are working with the chickens to go in, take water, um, put in extra feed, clean it out if need be without having to open these big doors and then all of a sudden all your chickens are all over the place. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is basically how it works. All, there's another two big doors on the other side, so it opens up completely and then the chickens are encouraged during the day to go out and nibble on the grass, turn up the soil, um, and then at night they'll be closed in here with the lock so no jackal or, or anything can get in there and cause havoc. Um, and then yeah, then they'll, they'll lay their eggs during the day um, there's a curtain that goes down in front of the laying coop so they can't roost it uh, in there at night and then yeah, um, mess the whole place up. And then yeah, over the wheel arch, we next year when the chickens arrive, it's gonna, they're going to arrive with 200 litre water tanks, which will, um, there will be a water system put up with nipples for the, um, so obviously the chickens have water. And then if you look at the top there, there's something called the ISO board, which is um, just insulation to keep them warm when it gets really cold, just to keep the heat in. And then that small gap you see at the top, that's obviously for ventilation. You want to go through there. Um, you have to make sure that they're not boiling or, or suffering and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, no, um, I, I take my hat off to these guys that I work with. They really, we worked, sometimes we worked late into the evening so for one week solidly we'd work until nine o'clock at night um just welding bolting things together um and then yeah um uncle dean very kindly um drove this thing to port elizabeth and he got it galvanized for us and the uh, the reason we got it galvanized is to stop the rusting we're so close to um the sea that yeah it, it'll it'll rust very very easily and we don't want jim in less than two weeks to have to send this thing for more galvanizing. We've already burnt a hole in this pocket, so we want this thing to last. Um, and I'm very confident that it will last. Um, and I, I hope it, it works for you and your, your yeah, fields get, get fertilized. Good. I think the, the galvanizing was interesting because it had to be all packed down completely in kit form and loaded on the trailer as flat. And then it was taken and then obviously, gal so everything was galvanized, which was, it was quite good. And then seeing it all come together and it, it actually all worked as a kit. It was impressive, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. I think, That's good. yeah. I think one of the the other things that we learned was um, what Uncle Dean and Cameron did so well um, during our, our tech um, term or specialization is they they stepped back and they let us do the work. They said, "Listen, here, you guys have got to sort it out. You guys get onto it." So if we needed help, we went to them. But they said, "No, this is this is how you do something." 
and get on with it. So leadership was learned, hard graft. Um, we, we did get under each other's skins and um, we disagreed about things, but that's what it's, that's what it's about. And that's, um, that's what we had to overcome as a group. And we, I think we did it, did it really well. Um, we also learned um, business, so calling people, dealing with grumpy people over the phone, um, trying to order materials, like, yeah, we, we learned a lot and trying to get the best price, asking for discounts. Um, yeah, it opened your eyes to what's actually out there in the real world. So, yeah, it, it was a good project and I'm really, really grateful that I did work on this project. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions about how it works or um, what maybe some of the guys want to share their experience of, of how it was, yeah. Maybe, uh, Oscar, um, you could just each of the guys could introduce themselves. If yeah, yeah, sure. Come from maybe one thing they learned from it. Perfect. Would you guys like to? Yeah. Uh, I'm Sebastian Prevert. I'm from Cape Town. And in grade 10, I visited Farmer Angus with my school. Um, and when I came to Quest, it was during our business week that I was talking to Jim Musto about my visit there and uh, how useful and beneficial it is for a farm to have a chicken coop like this. So myself and Jost Devet uh, built our a like, uh, simulation business on a chicken coop um, side business for Quest. And when we came back to, to do our specialty with tech, um, and we were told that we were thinking of building a chicken coop. Ross and I immediately jumped onto it and um, yeah, used our previous uh, Excel spreadsheets and stuff to pretty much uh, price the whole, the whole business <coughs> and how much of a profit it will make if we sold our eggs. And yeah, it was just a, Awesome experience, and yeah, I'm very grateful that we did it. What, what purpose does it make? What, what so, does it look like? so if we, since they're organic and free range, we could possibly sell our eggs for three rand. And uh, if you do that, you pay back the whole chicken coop in about 18 months, uh, with the chickens about two years. Yeah, and then it starts to make a profit. Um, yeah, I'm Matthew Tate, um, along with Seb and yours, and Angus, we're from Cape Town. Um, and yeah, I definitely learned um, the joys and the frustrations of welding. Um, it can be it can be very very frustrating if you get a weld wrong and then you spend much longer than you have to redoing the weld. Uh, whereas if you just do it right the first time, you know, it can actually be very 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 satisfying. Yeah. Um, I'm Nicholas Boyce and I'm from Singapore. And uh, I think one thing I've learned a lot of here is just like practical skills, how to you know, weld, how to use a drill, how to use an angle grinder, become very good at using power tools, things like that. Yeah. Hi, Jost um, also from Cape Town. And one thing I definitely learned from this coop was uh, how to weld properly. <laughs> and just putting this whole thing together was quite a challenge. So a lot of u little useful tips with drills and power tools was done through this coop. So, yeah. Uh, pretty much similar experience. Um, yeah, just learning with the power tools and uh, teamwork, learning some teamwork skills. Yeah, it was good.